Well, it's like we were talking about stand-up. It's just a thing you get used to doing. You know, like you're used to fighting. Like for you, I'm, I'm sure you get uh, heightened senses and you, you get fired up and your adrenaline kicks in. But this is a normal thing for yeah. you. To, uh, there's people that just would completely freeze in their f and not even be able to walk into the cage. Oh, yeah. They would have a panic attack. So. But you've done it so many times. I think that's the kind of the case with all things that are difficult to do. Yeah. I, I, that, too, and it's like a skill you have to learn because, like, Donald Cerrone, for example, it did it how many times? And, like, I was in the backstage when of his last fight. I fought, uh, I don't remember who I fought, but I, I was in, in the back room. He was walking out before me. He was warming up, and he just looked not scared. I don't know if they were nervous, like, had this anxious energy, and, uh, He's done it uh, more than anyone, but it's just like uh, and I think, then I think if you want to fight well that never really goes away I think you have confidence and I think you control it and I think the best guys learn how to handle it, but you know when you're looking at like uh, Alex Pajeda looking at style bender yeah. in the face-off like there has to be some crazy heightened sense of tension and awareness and the moment and it's it's a crazy big fight I don't think you get away with that without not having that yeah I think everybody has it. it's just some people handle it better and I think the guys that don't have it I think sometimes they get in trouble like some fights I've seen guys where they're just a little too calm a little yeah. too confident and then they get lit up yeah. it's almost like they can't wake themselves up interesting yeah I, for me my that last fight fight going there with Peter I just felt I felt no nerves. I felt so calm. Like, and I've had nerves. I've had fights. Like my my debut when I fought Terry on Ware. I remember like in the backstage, like closing my eyes too long, and I was thinking like, I, if I lose this and then lose one more, I could get cut. Like having that thought vividly, and I was like, whoa, fuck that. Okay, but, like counter that obviously with, with some positive shit. But that going into that last fight, I had zero nerves. I don't know if it was. I didn't feel like it was a win win. I'm like, I wasn't thinking like, oh, if I lose to Peter, like no one's gonna care. It was just. I don't know what it was, but I felt it was, it was confidence. Obviously, I had a really good training camp, had a good everything weight cut, um, but I wasn't nervous to to lose. But it wasn't because it was like to Peter. It just wasn't. I don't know. You just had gotten into a good headspace to yeah, compete. Maybe, just, yeah. maybe you're just like much better now at getting in the right headspace that allows you to compete at your best. Yeah. Because if you think about it, thinking about all those other things, those are not beneficial. And Pointless. you've experienced those in the past, and you learn from it. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It's like there's these moments in in life where you, you could think the wrong way and just go off the rails, or you could manage it. Yeah. It's a skill. It's a mental skill, and I've, I attribute that to all the things I do in preparation leading up to fights. And you know, I've had so many training camps now. I think that was my... 10th fight in the UFC and then I had a you know a ton of fights before that but I think it's just learning each camp a little bit more a little bit more to prepare yourself for for that specific moment yeah. fights are fucking weird because you like I had no plans for October 23rd the fight was October 22nd like it's just like you just plan on not dying but you're just like there's nothing else that matters for 12 weeks I knew I was fighting him for a long time over three months there was just nothing like, October 22nd was that date nothing else mattered it's it's crazy what kind of headspace you get into into fight camp and then after fight camp it takes takes me like two three weeks like we're four weeks out tomorrow from that last fight to get back to just normal thinking and mm. not and just being like being at home being a dad being it, you just, it's a weird mind space you get into in fight camp mm. yeah it's and it's I mean it's just a very disciplined mindset and then there's I know some fighters that don't really train and take it as serious like but everyone's different well i think you're figuring out how to do it right for you yeah you know you're you're dialing it in and i think the way you're doing it is the right way i think it's the only way you make those big leaps i mean you're in a fucking shark infested pond man yeah that is such a shark filled section of M mma that 135 pound division is wild man yeah and no one weighs 135 pounds. <laughs> Dude, Aljo, I know I heard Aljo say he was like 170 or something the other day. Aljo's so big. I'm like, what the fuck? He's no wonder the, he doesn't want to fight till his July. Build is like the perfect 135 pound. Like you can't get any bigger, any leaner. Yeah. It's like hit you know, there's like tweeners. Like I think Diego yeah. Sanchez was always a tweener. You know, he was like a little bit too small for fifty five. 
And, you know, when he tried to make 45, like, that was way too much of a weight cut. Yeah. And at 70, like, I think he was small for those guys. He beat a lot of good guys at all those weight classes. Like, Diego in his prime was just, but he was just an animal. And I was like, if there was a 160-pound division, like, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Yeah, no, that would that would be that'd be sweet if they had more divisions. I know you guys always talk about that. Yeah, but yeah that's. I mean, I think it should be every ten pounds. Yeah, it makes sense. Sixty-five. Uh, what is it? Seventy-five. Yeah. Eighty-five. Yeah. Because there's a thing too about guys who have too many fights with guys that are out of their weight class. Like I think it takes even more off of you. You know, I think if you're a small guy in the weight class and you have wars with the bigger guys in the weight class, I think it probably takes even more off of you. Yeah, I mean, and then for, Aljo might. In my opinion, I think, you know, I walk around one, I think I was 157, 158. I feel like that's that's prime. He's, he's If he's walking around 170, When you get to 58, big. is it in, like, looming in the back of your mind? 135. Oh, yeah. I don't get above, I, I will not get above 160 because I know I have to eventually make weight. And I think Aljo, like, that's just too, he, he's saying he doesn't want to fight, you know, the weight cut and all that. But that's, I mean, if you're going to be champion, look at Adesanya, he's fighting. Yeah. All the time. If you're gonna be champ, you got to be ready to go, well, and you can't get that big. What did you think about Adesanya when he went up and fight Jan Bohovic and he didn't even gain any weight? So that was from one, one eighty five to two hundred five. Yeah, he went from eighty five right. to two hundred five, and he wound up weighing like one ninety four or something like that. So he didn't do anything to try to gain weight. He just didn't cut weight. That's probably what he walks around at before he fights in middleweight. Yeah, I mean that was just a tough matchup for him to go up. Yeah. That's a lot of weight too. It's not like going up ten. Like for me to go up to forty five, it's only ten pounds for him. Yeah, you know, going up twenty pounds to try to become double champ. That's tough. That's that's like a shitty, shitty weight class to want to be double champ. And unless you're Alex Pereira, I don't get how he, because on the scale he doesn't look super super sucked in. Like doesn't look like he just got done cutting twenty pounds. But that motherfucker is so massive. He made Izzy look small, and I've been around Izzy. Izzy's a big guy. Yeah, is he's a long, tall man, and Pajeda's just everything was so. Did you see what Robert Whitaker said about it? The big fella. He goes, "You see the size of this fella?" Yeah. <laughs> I did. He's I a did. freaking giant. Yeah, and he is. I, that's an interest. They got to give Izzy the rematch, though, right? <laughs> oh, I've, I would think for sure him. if Izzy wants that, I would think that's yeah. his. Yeah, I mean, I, Izzy said he, he wanted it, but fuck, dude, he fought a damn near perfect fight. Yeah. for a couple more minutes. So he goes from. Yeah, from 83 kilograms to 99.3 kilograms. 